So we're talking about hunter and gatherers. Hunter and gatherers are early ancestors. So you have to think about that for hundreds of thousands of years, we've been hunter and gatherers. It's only just recently that we have agriculture and farming. We settled down into communities and created civilizations and cities and states and countries. Hunter-gatherers are early humans that hunted animals and gathered plants for food. Early humans would work, you ready for this, only about four to six hours a day. So a lot of anthropologists think that, hunt, which are uh, which are social scientists that study human culture and humans uh, from the past, they, they believe that actually we had it pretty good. We didn't work very long at all, about four or six hours a day. We played quite a bit. We danced, we had fun, we painted, we did a lot of extracurricular activities. Didn't really work that hard because we didn't have much to do. Men would hunt with the boys usually. Uh, females would hunt as well, but predominantly it was male. Women and girls would pick plants, nuts, berries, and stay more at home, take care of the children. And you have to think about they had a really healthy diet. We're finding out that hunter-gatherer diet is probably the way our body is designed to eat. So we're designed to eat like fresh fish, fresh meat, plants, berries, and nuts are good for us. Um, and the women would stay at home, feed the children, take care of the children a little bit more because of uh, the, the, the woman's body is designed for the females. But males would share duties as well. Hunter-gatherers were very communal. They lived in small tribes. Uh, one of the reasons that we are so successful as human beings time and time again, I think most social scientists are going to argue because we're collaborative. We cooperate. We work together. Uh, and that's what makes human beings so strong and dominant. When we don't work together, we're not very strong. We have very frail skin. We're not particularly strong animals compared to other creatures. Uh, if it's between a bear and a person, I'm going to bet on the bear. And, and let, it's the fact that we work together and we, we have technology and weapons and other things that make us strong and dominant. Women and men were treated pretty equally and worked together. So what's interesting is that actually hunter-gatherer societies, men and women were probably pretty equal, if not incredibly equal. And it wasn't until after we stopped being hunter and gatherers that men and women uh, start building different hierarchies where males became priests our government leaders, and they kind of became the dominant leadership of the group. So I want you to think about that. Um, in a hunter-gatherers tribe, why would men and women have to be treated pretty equally? And then finally, hunter-gatherers were nomadic. And nomadic means we had to move from place to place. So when we do experiments and we do simulations, we talk about how if you stay in one place and we've eaten all the animals, we've picked all the berries and nuts, we're going to perish. That's why until agriculture and farming is introduced, we have to keep moving. We have to follow the tribes. And we're going to end up in pretty interesting places in the world. So there's a picture. We still have hunter-gatherers today. Not many. Some live in the rainforest in the Amazon. There are some tribes in Africa and Asia, uh, in the islands of, of Southeast Asia. But... Nomads are people who move from place to place. We had to be very mobile. We had to move with the buffalo in North America, or we had to move with the cows or the sheep or whatever, whatever animals we were looking for. At. You know, in North America, there were giant sloths, which were really easy to hunt, and they had tons of food on them. Well, we ate them to extinction, believe it or not. And the theory is that in North America, you know, we have a Mastodon State Park right down here from St. Louis, and the theory is on Mastodon State Park that, um, again, human beings might have eaten Mastodons to extinction. It was right outside of St. Louis at the park that they found proof that human beings used some kind of spears and arrows to kill Mastodons, which proves that we ate Mastodons. And we probably put a lot of animals into extinction, point, hunting them to extinction for food. Nomads move from place to place in search of food or because they're following an animal such as a deer, buffalo, they move from warm places in the uh, winter, and they move to cooler places in the summer. The climate itself, they're going to move. Some would stay in colder climates. Some would stay in the hotter climates. But a lot would move back and forth with the seasons. There are still small groups of nomads in the world. 
Nomads live in mostly South America, Africa, and Australia, and the islands around there. So there is some indigenous people, and that's how we know so much about how they would live, because they, we watch them today. The anthropologists who study human beings and look at them today. There are some nomads in Alaska and Canada that are usually uh, from Eskimo tribes. And actually, I'm going to teach you a different word. I prefer, um, we're going to talk about um, indigenous tribes, which are people that originally come from colder tribes. And actually, the correct term is Inuit. So I want you to know the word Inuit. But you've heard the term Eskimos. But the correct term is Inuits. The Inuits are tribes that would live in very cold climates in the Americas and Alaska and Canada. Now, nomadic tribes would migrate in search of food. Migrate, move, meaning moving, moving from place to place. So migration is the act of actually moving from one place to another. Early humans usually migrated because they were following a herd of animals that they're hunting or because there's no more plants to eat. So if everything was gone at the time, we would move. And you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, there is a uh, African uh, uh, hunter-gatherer. And you can see he has a bow, some kind of spear, a mat. And he kind of carries his gear on his shoulder, and he's ready to go. Pretty good shape, too. He might be an older man, but he's pretty. they're pretty healthy. Because we exercise a lot and hunt and gather. So we ate very healthy. We were in good shape because we're always moving around and exercising. Probably in a lot better health than we are today. Many people still migrate today. Usually you move, uh, today you think about how we migrate. We migrate from one place to another, but it's more for new jobs or a safer place to live or a better life. So somebody might move to America because they think it's safer than another country. Or they might move from um, Chicago to St. Louis because they have a new job or there's more jobs in technology in this area and it's easier to get a job. Over 1 million people migrate to America every year. I don't know if you knew that. We call those immigrants, people that immigrate to America. So over a million come to America every year, about a million. So we have a lot of migration to the United States. And when people leave, we call that emigration with an E. Immigration with an I means you're coming to. Emigration with an E means you're leaving. So let's look real quick. About 15,000 years ago, and now we're seeing numbers that might be as far back as 30,000 years ago, nomadic tribes crossed the Bering Strait and migrated from Siberia, which is the very far east part of Russia and Asia, to North America, which would have been like Alaska. And they followed probably a herd of animals they were hunting. And at the time, there was an ice bridge. Well, about 15 to 30,000 years ago, that means that humans had left Asia Europe and Africa, and they come to North America. That's why when Christopher Columbus and the Vikings came to America, there were already indigenous tribes or Inuits up in Canada, uh, and there were uh, Arawaks in the islands that Columbus met. We had been for fifteen to 30,000 years, people had been in America before Columbus and the Vikings. Now, the Bering Strait melted when that ice age lasted about... 1.6 to 10,000 years ago, it, it melted, finally. And once it melted 10,000 years ago, whoever was here was stuck, unless they could get a boat and go across. And that is very dangerous waters. To try to cross from Alaska to Siberia, Russia, is very dangerous. You have to have special boats, and you have to know what you're doing. And about 10,000 years ago, the, the ice was completely melted. Now, you can no longer walk to Asia from North America.